It's been a news-filled few weeks, full of announcements, conferences, delays, release dates, and new consoles, and until going through everything now, while I've found it all exciting, I've also found it hard to keep up, which is exactly why I like doing these kinds of videos. With so many things to talk about, I hope this video catches us all up on the many things going on in the world of games and JRPGs right now. So from Switch lights to class mating, here's this episode of JRPG Quick Takes. Digimon games are some of my favorite monster collecting games, so I've been excited for the upcoming tactical Digimon RPG Digimon Survive ever since it was announced, and it was even one of my most anticipated JRPGs for this year. This excitement will have to wait though, as Bandai Namco announced at Anime Expo that the game has been delayed to 2020. This is a little bit of a shame, but also watching the Dev Diary released a little while ago shows that a lot of thought and love is being put into this game, so I'm sure it's for the best, and it looks like the team are really really trying to make something great. And speaking of, I highly recommend watching this dev diary as it gives great insight into Digimon as a game series, and I particularly enjoyed hearing how some of the petitions to bring Digimon games over to the West are some of the reason we have the Digimon games we do right now, so I'm really glad we can look forward to another nostalgic and hopefully great Digimon experience. We might have to wait for Digimon Survive, but there's still a Digimon game worth looking forward to, especially if you like to play on Switch or PC. Digimon Story Cybers Sleuth Complete Edition has been announced for October 18th this year, and seems to include both the first Cyber Sleuth game and its sequel, Hacker's Memory. I love the story and gameplay in both of these games a lot, so if you haven't checked them out, this re-release would be a great chance to do so. As for me, the package is being released at a jam-packed point of the year, so unless there's some new features, I don't know if I'll get to it right away as much as I'd like to, but I want to pick it up at some point, as this game is such a good fit for portable consoles, so in any case, I'm glad we can return to the digital world in some way sooner rather than later this year. Caligula series producer Takuya Yamanaka has teased that there's potentially more Caligula on the way. In a recent interview, he stated that the team are hard at work and little by little working to make the series better to deliver happy news, which all but says that there's another Caligula something on the way. So far we've seen Caligula in its original PS Vita version, in its remake The Caligula Effect Overdose, and in its anime, with the anime and Overdose both featuring songs exclusive to them, and a new Caligula would hopefully mean more amazing music in this series, on top of hopefully returning to its unique battle system and characters. As a game I really enjoyed this year, I would be very happy to play more in its universe, so hopefully we learn more of what the team is working on soon. One thing I was especially excited to catch up on for this video was all the Persona 5 Royal content that has been trickled out over the past month or so. I've caught up on little bits here and there, like the Kasumi trailer that made me love her even more, but I finally watched the two Monatsu videos that revealed some of the extra features coming to the new Royal Edition, along with its new character trailers for Ryuji, Yusuke, and An. What I loved most about these trailers so far have been the new character attacks that are really outlandish and have clearly had a lot of effort put into expressing that offbeat Persona humor in a gorgeous way. On top of flashy attacks, it sounds like Persona 5 Royal will have some cool features to make it pretty smooth to get to new stuff too. According to Persona Central, there's a feature in there that will give you advice on how to improve your stats and parameters more quickly, and in the latest Monatsu video they showed lots of ways to improve things like SP as well, such as in temples. There are also the new Ishi stones that are hidden deep within dungeons that give you great accessories if you can find them, and new extra benefits like the grapple hook style wire you can get for new confidants. All these great features together make Persona 5 Royal sound like a fantastic way to refresh an already great game, and make me happy I've waited to do my second playthrough, so I look forward to hearing more about it as most likely more character trailers will roll out soon and when the next Monatsu comes out in August. A couple of days after a cryptic teaser video that featured Death End Request's opening scene music was released on Compa Heart's Japanese YouTube channel, Death End Request 2 was announced for PS4 featuring a new cast of characters, and also the return of some characters from the first one, like Sheena and Mizunashi. The story this time around will take place in the real world, and is said to focus much more on occult mysteries, which makes sense as the last game touched on them a fair bit. The new characters look great in the art style, and I'm looking forward to hearing more information on the game and what kind of good 
good and bad endings will be in the story as more gets announced about it. A quick thing to notice is that it hasn't been announced for PC or the West yet for that matter, but considering the amount of Compile Heart titles coming to both these days, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an announcement closer to its release in Japan. So since it's still early days and there isn't even a Japanese release date yet, let's hope for good news in the future. The Nintendo Switch Lite was recently announced to be coming out in September and will be a slightly cheaper version of the original handheld home console Fusion that will this time simply dedicate itself to handheld gaming. The all-in-one unit comes in a vibrant yellow, turquoise, or gray and will retail for about $200 and is a nice cheaper alternative to the original. So I hope this Lite version will let more people try the wonderful system, especially with so many JRPGs coming out towards the end of the year. Now that the Switch Lite is coming and will presumably take over the 3DS as Nintendo's main portable, I also wonder what the fate will be for 3DS games from here on. I'm always up for a good re-release of something I haven't been able to play yet, and there are the Persona Q games, some Fire Emblem and Pokemon games on 3DS that I would love to see on Switch at some point, so perhaps the light will make it be something they consider. I know there's the issue with the second screen, and I still own my 3DS, so I'm sure I'll get to everything eventually, but it'd be nice to see these games, and even ones from the Wii U, live on somehow on these new and Nintendo consoles. Regardless, the Switch Lite looks pretty nice by itself, and those color options will be tempting when the console comes out. Also, as I was making this, it got announced that another regular Switch model will be coming with an improved battery life. This is probably because of the fact that it worked out that the first Switch had a lower battery life than the newer Nintendo Switch Lite, with the first model having a maximum of 6.5 hours of battery, whereas the Lite will have 7 hours. This new Nintendo Switch model will boast about 9 hours of maximum battery life, and apparently Apparently no other new features, so if you're looking to buy a Switch for the first time, these two newer models look like a good way to start your Switch life in the best way possible. Conception Plus Maidens of the Twelve Stars has been announced to be coming to the West in November 5th this year in North America and November 8th in Europe. I was excited to see the trailer for this and really like the idea of its Zodiac theme, with the dating sim cross JRPG having a girl for each Zodiac sign, which sounds like a cool concept to partner with the getting together with these girls and performing class mating to make a party full of yours and your heroine star children, and the amusing ideas in this world make a one I'm excited to come back to. What's particularly made me interested in Conception this time round is my relationship with its sequel that was actually the first Conception game to come to the West, Conception 2. I played Conception 2 on PS Vita a while ago when I was really getting back into JRPGs in a big way after falling in love with Persona 4 Golden, and it was the first game I'd played like it as it was my first dating sim and game with this kind of romantic silliness. As a result, this along with the fact I played the game slowly made me not really understand it at the time and I thought I didn't like it, yet it's a game I look back on fondly nowadays as I love silly games now, and it even popped into my head when I was making my top 5 PS Vita game list. So to return to the world in this redone version of the first one would be great, and since I've played many silly JRPGs since then, I'm curious to see how I feel about it now. I've kept the Japanese demo for Conception Plus on my PS4 for a good while with that in mind, so hopefully I can at least give it a try soon. And while the class mating ritual is being censored a little in the PS4 version, I'm still excited to get back to the humorous and fun world that this game will provide, and we'll be happy to see this weird and wonderful series come back in this remade way. While the game isn't out in the West yet, the full soundtrack for Crystar by composer Sakizyo is available online and features all the BGM songs composed for the game. Since the opening song, Ken Cry, is by Nagi Yanagi, that song notably isn't on the album, but if you've heard some of the music from Crystar from things like its menu and dungeons, it's really good. Someone was nice enough to let me know about this in the comments, and I really like Sakuzio's pieces from the little bit I've played of Crystar so far, so I thought I'd give it a mention in case anyone is interested in hearing the music before the game comes out, and if you want to get to know Crystar for more than its music, a new character trailer is also out that showcases the English voice acting for the game, and while I don't have anything groundbreaking to say about that, you all know that I'm really excited for this game and I'll take most excuses to give it a mention. 
I previously had a small tidbit in the second half of this video about Trails of Cold Steel 3's cool looking gameplay trailer. However, since then, it's been announced that the game has been delayed until October 22nd this year. The reason for the change cited by NIS is to guarantee as successful a launch window as possible, and they apologize to fans looking forward to the game. This kind of delay is usually for the best, so hopefully it just means we're getting the best Trails of Cold Steel 3 that we possibly can get. And at the very least, they did provide a little bit of good news too. A demo for the game was also announced to be coming prior to its release, and while they didn't announce exactly when it will come out, I'm always a fan of demos to try games with, and it's something I'd love to try before its release, especially if it's spoiler free. We'll have to wait for more details on that one, but it sounds like NIS are hard at work to give us a good new Trails experience. The release dates in JRPG news just kept coming last month, and frankly still is, so these are all the releases and leftover news I had just a little to say about and for the most part look really exciting. Star Ocean First Departure R, an enhanced remake of the PSP remake of the original Star Ocean game, has been announced for PS4 and Switch. While not much detail has been given me on that and the fact that it's a high-res version of its PSP version, this is good news for players like me who have been curious about the Star Ocean series but unsure where to start. Pokemon Sword and Shield had a direct of its own, as well as an appearance at Nintendo Treehouse during E3, and during its direct, it had its release date revealed, some legendary showed, and a feature that showed off its giant Pokemon-making Dynamax feature for the first time. Pokemon Sword and Shield will be released worldwide on November 15th this year, available in its individual Sword and Shield editions, and also in a double pack featuring both. It looks adorable so far, and its starters looked as cute as ever in the direct, and I can't wait to run around in its big Pokemon-filled world again in an another fun December with a Pokemon release. Code Vein has released its opening cinematic, which looks very cool and raised my hype for the game. And on top of that, there's Code Vein Protein Powder. There's a lot of Code Vein videos online if you really want to dive into it, but all I have to say is it looks really good and I hope to enjoy it destroying me when it comes out. Destiny Connect TikTok Travelers has been given a release date of October 22nd for the West for PS4 and Nintendo Switch and still looks completely adorable. October is working out to be a jam-packed month full of games, so I really hope I can get to this one. And while I haven't gotten to the Japanese Destiny Connect demo yet, as I keep making videos, I still really like the movie and Pixar feel of it, and would really like to try it properly sometime, hopefully close to its release. The Pokemon Go S Dragon Quest Walk has been announced for Japan and will come to smartphones this year. I don't know if I'll actually play this one, I just wanted to give it a shout out as its trailer of real Dragon Quest monsters running around the city of Tokyo was really funny to watch. The fact that it's supposed to be a little more RPG-like than Pokemon Go does make it that little bit more intriguing, so maybe I'll give it a try. But for now, I love how the trailer brought the idea of having monsters in the real world to life in a very amusing way. Lagrissa 1 and 2 will be making its way west through a remake via NIS America in 2020. The classic JRPG series is one I've heard of before, but I'm pretty bad at catching up on old school JRPGs as I prefer a modern aesthetic. But when I looked at the trailers for the new version, it doesn't look bad at all, and even looks kind of similar to Fire Emblem on 3DS, which I can definitely get behind, so I hope we get more info and a more precise release window soon. Finally, like my last Quick Takes video where Atelia Ryza was suddenly teased the day before I put out my video, Atelia Ryza has had a theme song video released for it as I finish getting everything ready for this video, and it's so pretty that I had to mention it. The theme song is nice and feels fun and airy with all of its layered vocals, almost giving it the feeling of a summer breeze, and I love that they use the 3D models for this video, especially if it is the opening for the game, which looks likely at this point. They also showed a new mysterious looking character that I'm pretty sure we haven't seen before, so I do wonder what kind of role she'll play in the story. In any case, Gust and Koei Tecmo are doing an outstanding job of keeping that Ryza hype going for the game with trickling out information at just the right pace. So as I'm sure you can all tell, I'm very excited for this new Atelier and will do my best to patiently await the next bit of information they might give us soon. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what JRPG release you're excited about and what you thought of any and all of the things talked about in this video. And a special thanks to those who contributed to this video, whether it ended up in this video or in any of my recent Atelier Ryza content, I really appreciate it. And if there's any topic you want me to cover, feel free to leave it in the comments. I've also set up a new email for tips if that's easier for some people, and I'll leave that in the description. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more 
JRPG content like this and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below along with links to all the things I mentioned in this video. And until next time, thank you! Bye!